Hello and welcome to the Clubhouse. My name is Alice and I'm so glad you could join us today. Now since we started making these videos, Michael has gradually gotten me to watch more and more of the YouTubes so that I can fully appreciate the likes of The Craftsman, Steady Crafton, Evan and Caitlin, and even this old Tony and Frank makes. I've gone down the rabbit holes of Laura Kampf, April Wilkerson, and Simone Gertz. I mean Yurtz. I mean Yetz. Dang, I knew I was gonna flub that one. Her last name does not sound like it's spelled. Sorry, Simone. We love your truckla. Anyhow, I've come to really appreciate just how many makers there are out there sharing all their best tips and tricks. It makes it so much more awesome that with all the variety, you're spending some time with little old me. Thanks, y'all. You're the best. So do y'all remember when mason jars were all the rage on Pinterest? I mean, they probably still are. But like I said, I'm into YouTube now. Those Pinterest jar projects, they just kept coming, y'all. Making table lights for your wedding, luminaries for your backyard bat mitzvah, photo backdrops for your quinceanera. So many jars. Now I guess we're all hoarding them for pickling. Apparently there's been a bit of a shortage. I know we've got a fridge full of the summer's pickle harvest here. Well, fear not, 14.8 year olds. We can save that photo shoot yet. You don't need to waste our precious pickling jars on this project because we're going to raid the recycling bin instead of the top shelf of the pantry. It's super satisfying to make good stuff out of trash. And here's what you'll need to join me. So tissue paper, the more colors you have, the better. You'll want Mod Podge or gel medium, clear glassware, paintbrush, scissors, and paper punches. Now these are optional, y'all, but they are great for getting shapes that you want to repeat. So step one, we're gonna clean that glassware. These are YoPlay Wee yogurt jars that someone has been collecting for me cause they're cute. Now you can use some soapy water or get real fancy with glass cleaner or my favorite, a little bit of isopropyl alcohol if you have it. A little vegetable oil and something to scrape with like a butter knife can help remove the last bit of sticky residue from those pesky labels. Now our next step is to pick our colors and prep our paper. We're gonna cut this batch into some more squares. So the best way to cut tissue is to layer it first. I'm working with about six colors here and I'm gonna fold it in half again to make 12 layers of tissue. And then cut those sheets into smaller, more manageable squares. So let's cut them down the center here. So I wanna try and make those lines, those edges even. I guess these will be more like rectangles. Now, if you have some larger paper punches in your craft stash, they're also really fun to add into the mix. You'll want to work by layering that tissue in the same way, and then depending on how sharp your punch is, it may take more or less layers of tissue to punch out shapes. And let's see, again, this is about 12 layers. Oh, that came out pretty good. And then again, you'll wanna separate them before you use them. So I'm a weirdo, cause I even saved the remnants from using the circle punch earlier, cause I thought those might be fun to use. Now, I do like to have all my tissue cut into ready to use pieces before I start with the glue. Life is messy enough. I'm using Mod Podge. Now this stuff is great because it's water-based, it dries clear, and is also a sealer. So once it's dry, it's permanent. So Mod Podge and acrylic medium come in a bunch of different flavors. I tried glossy, matte, and mega glitter. This one's mega glitter. Can I just brag on that for a minute? Mega glitter. Bloop. So I've just got a little brush here, got my Mod Podge. Now I'm gonna apply the Mod Podge in a small area, right to my glass. Nice thick bit. And then I'm gonna stick my first piece of tissue paper in there. Just kind of tapping that down with my finger, just a little. I try not to use my fingers, it's real sticky. But I'm gonna come right back on top of that tissue and I'm gonna cover it with Mod Podge. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna hit the area below. And I was working, leaving my bottoms open. So I'm just gonna glue to where I want that tissue to stick to. I'm gonna grab another piece. And I'm just gonna lay that right on top. Kinda of tapping into that shape around the bottom there. And then I'm gonna take my Mod Podge and I'm gonna paint that in place. Now I'm gonna come up to the top here and I'm gonna do exactly the same. I'm gonna hit that rim, paint a little Mod Podge there, grab another color, how about green? I'm gonna overlap it a little bit. Now this little lip is, I was gonna say tricky, barely, it's barely tricky. But you wanna make sure to get some Mod Podge there and to smooth that into that crease of that lid. Now, I found that it dries pretty quickly, so I actually try not to do a real big area. 
at once. I have better luck with working just small pieces. I'm trying to keep the overlapped areas thin and consistent, and I'm trying to make straight lines. See how successful that is when we get to the end. Also, watch out as you get further along, watch out where you're putting your fingers. Sticking your fingers into that Mod Podge that you're working on on the tissue paper is not a good thing. So once your Mod Podge is fully dry, you can come back in, I used a razor, and you can trim along the edge, get all that excess tissue paper off of there. Give yourself a nice, clean edge. You gotta get that at just the right angle, y'all. There we go, that looks pretty good. So one layer of tissue is what you want for a candle holder. You'll see where those little pieces overlap when you light the candle. And that's what gives it kind of a stained glass look, where they overlap. Now, if you're not interested in using this jar for a candle, you can layer as much tissue as you like. You'll get much richer colors. With our experiments, we found that simple shapes were a lot more fun to work with than trying to make fancy pictures with your tissue. So here's another thing to try. After my first layer dried, I added some black tissue shapes on top. These were square window panes shapes like so. I applied the gel medium and then the strips and more gel medium on top of it just like before. Well there you have it. Is this the next mason jar crafting project craze? Only time will tell. Now I wonder if I can use mason jars to make some sort of see-through brick fence for our garden. I mean brick walls are masonry. Hmm coincidence? Probably. Don't know. Maybe I should do some research on that. Right well until next time this is Alice signing off from our Summer Avenue Clubhouse. See you soon.